Hey YouTubers, Vits Fix here. This is a Toyota 2011 3 cylinder 1000cc engine vehicle. Um, the last time I made a video on engine vibration, I said that the vibrating effect when the vehicle comes to a complete stop is normal. But as a customer driving a vehicle, that should not be a normal situation. You want to have some level of comfort while driving the vehicle. So over a period of time, I have took note of the vibrating issue. And what I notice is that whenever the, the, the vehicle comes to a complete stop, the engine will vibrate during some times. And if the vehicle is idling, and say for example, you activate some kind of electrical load in the vehicle, like winding up the window, winding it down, turn on the AC, uh, turn on the roof light, even the indicator lights, whether left or right or the hazard light. And even if the radiator fan trips in, you would notice a vibration in the engine. And we are wondering what is actually causing that. I have this vehicle for about three years now, and I've took note of it. And I have looked into some of the reasons that would cause this sort of problem. So um, what I will do is to use the scan tool, which is a blue driver scan tool, and look at the engine speed or the, the RPM speed while I am activating the load to see what's the effect on the RPM. And then we will see if these loads, when you activate them, that is winding down the window, turning on the AC, or even turning on the indicator light. What will happen to the RPM of the engine whenever these things are activated? So, what I will do is to do an experiment with this blue driver here and bring it up on the device that I'm using now. And we will take note of the RPM while I am activating a load or so to see if the RPM of the vehicle goes down. And if it goes down, it is going to give an indication that uh, something is causing that RPM to go down when the load is activated. And we will have further discussion of that after we take note of the experiment that I will carry out with this scan tool here. So let us move on to using the blue driver device. Okay, I'm plugging in the blue driver scan tool into the vehicle, some vehicle where the, the, um, the port is for the blue driver device is different but mine is right here right below the dashboard below the steering column and uh, you can just uh, plug it in or if it does not go in mine go in right away but you can switch it around if whenever you're pushing it up and it does not go in turn it around and plug it in and you will see a blue light that is coming on there now in order for the blue driver to be activated or to be connected to your phone you first have to switch the the um, ignition key and allow the lights to come on into your vehicle now you do not turn on the vehicle in order to connect the blue driver to the phone what um, you would need to do if you want to go live with for example graphs and so on you would need to switch on the ignition switch on the car itself but for connecting purpose you don't necessarily need to switch on the, the car so I'm going to connect the blue driver now since i have the lights in the dashboard and the reason why i'm using the blue driver device is because i do not have a rpm meter on this car so the blue driver will assist me in getting what the rpm is during the experiment that i am going to carry out okay we'll be moving on to the experiment now all right i'm presently connecting the blue driver device to the vehicle or to the phone right, i'm gonna activate the blue driver up on the phone Blue driver, the blue driver app is activating, connecting to sensor. No, it won't connect because I have not switched on the ignition. Presently switching on the ignition. I'm going to cancel this connection. Blue light is flashing on the blue driver. Alright, I'm going to unplug the blue driver scan tool and re-plug it back in. Now let me see what will be happening. Phone blue driver connecting, still connecting. 
connected so we're going to select no for this because we're not going to put in any vehicle information now the aim is to ensure that whenever we press uh, electrical load on the vehicle that day the rpm of the vehicle actually goes down so i'm going to switch on the ignition the ignition is switched on i'm going to select the live data function of the the blue driver okay and we notice without even activating any load the engine revolution or the rpm is good it went down to 600 and something and went back up i'm going to wind down the the right window look at the rpm the rpm went down it quickly comes back up we're going to wind up at the window went down again quickly comes back up i'm going to wind down the left window went down rpm remain up wind back up the left window RPM went down and came back up. We're gonna turn on the AC, switching on the knob. One, two. The RPM went down a little and then come right back up quickly. Switch off the AC. I'm going to turn on the left indicator. There's a slight vibration, but the there's hardly any change in the RPM. Well, there was a change and then it registers back. I'm going to try the right indicator now. Reduction in RPM. And then it comes right back up. It goes down and come back up. I'm going to try the hazard light. Okay, there's also a reduction, quick reduction and then return back to normal and then it goes back down. Fluctuating at 690 something and it went back up. 80 something 685 so the rpm is fluctuating between 660 something 690 something to 700 and roughly 710 basically even though it does not reach 10 but it's fluctuating and it's causing a slight engine vibration so i'm going to turn off the hazard light i'm going to turn on the headlamp Okay, and there was a significant reduction 660 something and then it goes right back up I'm gonna turn off the headlamp and then the engine speed return to normal actually 700 rpm to a thousand rpm is a normal operation but when it went, goes down to 600 that's when you will feel the vibration in the engine and most times when you activate a load like I'm gonna wind back down the right window goes down to 600 and something wind up back the window right window it goes back down to 600 and something so whenever they when, what I notice is that whenever the RPM goes down to 660 something and 690 something up close to 700 RPM engine vibration comes in so there we have it the engine vibration mainly occurs when the car RPM goes down to 600 and 60 something to 690 something so the safe rpm value is actually 700 rpm and above but it should not go below a thousand rpm all right so safe 700 rpm and the maximum during idling is a thousand rpm but anytime it goes below 700 rpm the vibration will start all right, so we are going to go into some further explanation about this that we are observing. All right, this is a review of the experiment done with the, the Blue Driver Scan Tool regarding the RPM and the engine load, whether it is electronic or electrical engine load, um, either by the use of the window winding up or winding down and, or the activation of an electrical or electronic equipment on the vehicle now um, in with the reduction of the RPM this is normal however the issue is when it the RPM is reduced to the point where the engine starts to vibrate now the vibration is not normal so the load pulling the engine RPM down to a level where it starts to vibrate should not be what should be is that the rpm should be at a level where when the load is added there is a reduction but it does not reduce 
the RPM to the level where you would have an engine vibration. And because I'm not sure if it is the software that is on the computer of the vehicle where the minimum um, RPM is such that whenever a load is added, the RPM actually falls below the minimum RPM of the computer and therefore you would find out that the computer increases the engine speed to compensate for that reduction in engine load below the, the normal RPM. So um, at times you will see when the, the engine, the RPM reaches a minimum, the engine starts to vibrate and this vibration actually um, is, uh, the engine RPM is increased to, to, to stop the vibration. So what I think is that the engine RPM needs to be set a little higher. Um, we notice when it, when it is reduced to less than 700 RPM, the engine vibration starts. Now, I think in order to prevent the vibration, the, the minimum RPM of the vehicle probably could be set at 800 RPM. So to prevent the vibrating effect, because um, if it is set at 800, at least when load is, is added, the RPM would not be reduced to less than 700 RPM. Probably it would go to about 750, but going below 700 would cause a vibration. And uh, this would prevent that. If it is, is preset, the R, minimum RPM is preset at 800 or even 750. So I think the RPM of the vehicle, the minimum RPM from the computer standpoint, is low and this is causing the vibrating effect when load is added to the vehicle. Um, I wish I could have a solution to this issue. Probably um, Toyota would have to change the minimum RPM on these vehicles because if it operates normal and does not vibrate when it reaches minimum RPM for a new vehicle, brand new vehicle, um, as the vehicle gets old, additional stress is added to it. And because of these additional stress, I would assume engine vibration would occur as a result. So I think it would be wise even to set it while the vehicle is new at 750 or 800 RPM. But um, I am not too sure if the RPM is set for Toyota at 700 RPM or lower. I cannot say whether that is so. Um, hopefully this video though will assist in some kind of way to help you to find some kind of solution to or, or um, help you to come to some conclusion regarding engine vibration in these types of vehicle 2011 3 cylinder 1000 cc VITS and um, hopefully this video is of help to anybody watching. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you think this video is helpful in any way or the other. Once again, thank you.